Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in! Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Fresh off a spectacular oh. NFL draft. Delicious. It was a delicious sports weekend. We had the NFL draft the entire weekend. We had parts three and four of the Last <laughs> Dance documentary. Look, this is in a world where I am I have no sports whatsoever. I I just mainlined everything I could possibly get. I was up at eight thirty or what was it nine at nine a.m. watching rounds four through seven. Just like just oh, just yeah. give it all to me, man. Right I need in the it. veins. I need it, baby. Come on, you know, come on. You're giving me an idea now, Mike. I don't understand you. Uh-oh. I think you. Oh, it's not I think what you I think talked the other day about the fact that there's just nothing on. That people are just talking about nothing. Yes, you know, on the sports channels, they're just they're just arguing to argue. We should just we should have just reset '90s basketball and just played the games, play them live on the air as though they're happening. I don't uh, remember what happened in any of those games. That'd be fun. I honestly think people have been doing that. Like they're just throwing <laughs> ra- random eras of sports on and they're watching because they don't. I, I don't remember. We we're we're going we're starting to stack guys out and. Arizona just happens to be the first team, and I'm going, I'm looking, all right, recap, what happened last? Michael Crabtree, <laughs> what was he doing? I'm like, oh, man, he was on the Cardinals for like five seconds. All right, it's Tuesday, April 28th, the Fantasy Footballers AFC Winners and Losers episode today. Appreciate you joining us. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Appreciate the subscribes, reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Ad free on Stitcher Premium. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you subscribe over there. Click the bell. Mike is waving both hands. Mm, with, that's Very the best way to wave. Kind welcome. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I am I am so in statting mode, in research mode, in just like I'm I'm toe toe Totes? toes are in the water. The toes are in the water. I don't, okay. I'm just I'm not here in the sense that <laughs> we are. Toes in water is not a phrase that, means that describes you're like dipping all in. in. You're, <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite. One toe I'm out of the in, water. Toes are, toes toes are toes out of the in. water. I'm Just underneath. Your toes. I'm drowning. But look, <laughs> this, is, out. <laughs> this is one of my favorite times of the year. Like We've got our rookie drafts going on in our dynasty leagues. We have d- d- already gotten our, our yes. dynasty rankings, our rookie rankings for the ultimate draft kit. Those are live now. And I am I am so in the mode. I mean, research. you're toes out, bro. I'm toes out. I'm toes out of the water. <laughs> He's toe up. He's toes oh, out. Oh man, no, oh. I get it. We're we're in the midst of. Uh, we're able to now stat out each team. The draft has happened. We know the depth chart. Lots of surprises from the draft. Lots of winners. Lots of losers. Lots of dynasty teams that are happy. Lots of dynasty owners that are sad with what took place. What was the biggest surprise from the NFL draft for each of you? Player wise. For everyone, you mean? <laughs> I, I I don't know how anybody has an answer outside of Jordan Love being traded up for by the Packers. Well, if you want, you could just say the Green Bay Packers draft. Like, sure. You could package that thing thing together, but the 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 main event of that was Jordan Love, yeah. Yeah. I mean what you know, when you're when you're a game away from the Super Bowl and you're right there and you've got Aaron Rodgers, a 13-win team, what you want to do is you want to get players for three years in the future. You want to make sure that you don't add anyone that's going to play right now or help the team now because you're kind of in a little bit of a rebuild here is what it seems like. That's why I actually, I don't know, I know you guys are working on the ultimate draft kit for this year, but I'm starting to stat out for 2024. Oh, So you I'm can not get Jordan Love in there? Yeah, I'm just statting out. I want to be way ahead of the game. Yeah. Like the so Packers. It was absolutely wild that the Packers, not only did they decide they needed to spend their first round pick on a quarterback, they needed to also 
light their fourth round pick on fire at the exact same time to pass a bunch of teams that certainly had no interest in Jordan Love. I guess the paranoia that perhaps somebody else had the same idea to go in, which to be fair, I I get it. It's it's not the first time we've seen teams kind of sneak back into the the end of the first round for a quarterback because then you get that fifth year option. It is just I read that they uh, were true baffling. to the that they were true to their board. And when I heard that, when that was the quote, I said, But wait, you trade it up. Like, is right. it being true to your board just drafting who's on your board at the time you're there? Yes, one hundred percent. That is not being true to your board. Unless maybe Jordan Love was number one on their board. Like maybe. you know, he was should have been the first pick, and at this point you gotta go get him. But uh yeah, that that did not make any sense to me. I mean, in the the deepest wide receiver draft in modern NFL history, rivaling the 2014 draft, the Green Bay Packers, who seemingly are desperate for another wide receiver, said, eh, we're good here. We're not taking one. I mean, how much do they love Funchess? <laughs> they, yeah. They've got their wide More receiver than two on me. lockdown. Yeah. I will say that the, the Jalen Hurts draft pick by the Philadelphia Eagles – that one, while surprising, makes total sense top to bottom, in my opinion. I mean, this is a team that struggled with uh, Carson Wentz staying upright. He was given the big extension. But backup quarterback on the Eagles is a pretty important position. <laughs> it's, it has been the last couple of years, yeah. And Hertz is not, you know, he's a player that you can utilize in other capacities, be creative with him. A lot of people have compared him to a guy we'll talk about in news, Taysom Hill, where you may be able to create some packages for him depending on what you want to do with your quarterback depth chart on game day. At least I could kind of understand some of the logic there. You don't have to go out and, and pay a bunch of money for a backup quarterback for the next handful of years with Wentz. So that was a surprising pick. It's always interesting to see where these top quarterback options go when it's not somebody drafting them to start right away. C.D. Lamb, it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, you know uh, it was it was excellent. And what what's funny, honestly, so we're as fantasy people as we're watching the NFL draft, you know, like we we're projecting every team is going to take a skill position player because that's ba that's just what we want to have happen. But there was this weird feeling as soon as they put Jerry up, like his his video was up where he's broadcasting from the yacht, and it was like the Eagles. All the chatter, like online, all the chatter with my Eagles buddies are like, holy crap, move up. The, the the wide receivers are falling. We have to go and get it. CeeDee Lamb is available. As soon as Jerry go Jones' face was on that television, it was, this dude's going to take CeeDee Lamb. He doesn't even need him, and he's going to do it to stick it to the Philadelphia Eagles as a reminder of, hey, guys, remember trading up? right past us so you could grab Dallas Goddard when we needed a tight end. We don't need CeeDee Lamb, but you can't have him. It was awesome. It was amazing. But it sucks for fantasy. It really does. Because, <laughs> a little bit it does. You know, yeah. it hurts. We, we, we're all big fans of Michael Gallup, his potential. Um, obviously, Amari Cooper being a super highly drafted guy. And now you go to a team where it's like, He's presumably the it, the third best option his rookie year. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the wide receivers – and their landing spots, I think, in this NFL draft were really negative for fantasy. There was no, like... At least you know, for, a, for right away, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, the main guys. I mean, Rager had a good landing spot. But, I, you know, I, I felt like at least with Jerry Judy and, and CeeDee Lamb, I was disappointed. On running backs, on the other hand, I think there were Oof. several Oof. excellent, uh, you know, they, they got a big boost after the draft. We're going to go through the AFC teams and identify winners and losers on today's show. Jason is the big winner of oh. our draft bet. Oh, oh give me he that. He ended up getting yep. uh, three picks correct, made him the winner. Mike and I now have to buy him a mm. mail order box of meat. Mm. Make it special. Buy him fellas. some Omaha. And you've already, like, within minutes of knowing you won, you were starting to tell us what you prefer in the box. <laughs> so we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get it sorted out, which I think was a lot of fillets and that's right, uh, fillets and, and caramel apple tartlets. Yes, he <laughs> just just both equal proportions. And did you just drink out of an entire pitcher? Oh yeah, this is my uh, is that my, a steen? That's it, a very it, large it cup, Jason. This is a uh, this is my 
uh, brewski mug from um, what's that? Night Knights of the Round Table, the Man. medieval times. This guy's toes but, out uh, about everything. <laughs> Water, nice. got to stay hydrated. <laughs> Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, the Saints have rewarded Taysom Hill a two-year, twenty-one million dollar contract. Good for Taysom Hill, sixteen yeah. million guaranteed. Oh, that's so crazy. The Saints also signed Jameis Winston to a one-year deal, allowing them to have some more uh, innovative Taysom Hill usage this year, potentially. It is to me such a brilliant signing to bring. Jameis Winston on board for both parties. Jameis Winston gets his foot in the door to be the replacement of Drew Brees should things work out well for him. On the and and, and likewise, the the Saints have a legitimate option to see in practice, uh, week in and week out, work with groom him up to be a replacement. I think we all expect this to be Drew Brees' last season. Let's say it doesn't happen, and Jameis Winston goes out and signs somewhere next year. You get a nice compensatory pick because he's a quarterback. The money's going to be there. So no matter what, both no matter what the future is, this is a great signing and it's it's a quality backup. Um, now that you lost Teddy, I, I I just thought this was brilliant from the Saints and from Winston's uh, side as well. It's brutal for Dynasty. I was talking to Jason earlier because I like I have Jameis on my Dynasty squad, and it's I I can't drop him, and somehow. Jameis Winston simultaneously holds absolutely no value and tremendous value at the exact same time, which means I just have to keep him on my bench there. And so it's it's kind of obnoxious for that. Could you imagine Michael Thomas's future when they still keep having to come back from all the interceptions? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. I don't have a, a mediocre uh, trade. Of the week, but the, oh, Eagles, no. the Eagles have acquired wide receiver Marquise Goodwin from the 49ers. This okay. was uh, a transaction, one of two that the 49ers made to kind of get rid of players that still have value, but they don't want anymore at all. And that includes the Dolphins acquiring Matt Breida from the 49ers in exchange for the number 153 overall pick. So Goodwin, Breida, gone from the 49ers. Your reaction to these two moves, does Brita have an opportunity in Miami now that you are paying attention to for fantasy? I will be paying attention. Uh, I'm not going to be super high on him. It was interesting because up till that point, which was, I mean, that's very late in the draft, Jordan Howard was one of the big time fantasy winners where, you know, it was, it was a pretty unanimous projection that Miami would use one of their thousand picks to grab one of the running backs because there's a lot of really good players in this draft and they chose not to instead they trade a really low pick for Matt Burita so if he will be somewhat interesting but I will still project Jordan Howard to be the leader of the timeshare yeah it's a nice change of pace for Howard but I, I think Howard was a was still a major winner here I'm not too worried about Burita for fantasy all right, and then looking at another surprise from the draft, the Patriots, they did not draft a quarterback. If you saw mm -hmm. their comments today, they said that was not by design, that it had the right quarterback been there at the right situation that would have taken them, just didn't fall that way. A lot of people speculating that Cam Newton, who's still a free agent, Jameis Winston now signed, who was also rumored as a potential Patriot. Cam Newton, no interest thus far from the Patriots. Do you think that they're going to go into the season with Stidham? I do. That's that's my belief. I mean, I joke that Brian Hoyer is going to be the starter, <laughs> but it, it's a joke. They're going to see what they have in Stidham, and I think they'll find out quickly they don't have what they want uh, at quarterback. Maybe. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe not. We we haven't seen enough on on the field, um, you know. But when you say that it wasn't by design that they were not going to get a quarterback means that, you know, it was in their plans to make an effort to do that, but they weren't going to draft someone they didn't believe in just because they, they, they or reach. To. Yeah. 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 And then uh, the Browns, for whatever reason, exercised their fifth year option on tight end David and Joku. This is after they, what they spent a draft pick on a tight end and they also have yes. Austin Hooper. That is mm -hmm. correct. They've kicked so, him to the curb and then said, but we're going to keep you around. We don't want you to be able to go sign I did not read else. on this one. Was there logic behind it? 
<laughs> I, I didn't read any news that told me why like this is where you guys break the news to me that oh by signing him to the fifth year option that means david and joku can be I, cut, is he more you know. tradable now well i don't know he is tradable now in the sense that he's not going to end up being a free agent and if someone wants him if someone was looking at him they're gonna have to pay this franchise now so maybe that's the the thinking um he's obviously still a physically talented guy and tight ends uh, at a you know at a young age don't usually do much so i i still think njoku has a career ahead of him um but this sucks if he stays on the browns now for that yeah. fifth year it's a little weird but speaking of winners today's sponsor omaha steaks we're oh, all staying fitting. home and now is the time to stock up they deliver the world's best steaks a huge variety of family favorites without leaving your home Omaha Steaks, they, they got this stock-up box. It makes a great care package for a friend, a loved one. You got to make sure everyone's got a full freezer of super delicious meat, and they deliver guaranteed quality and safety with every order. You can choose from steaks, chicken, pork, burgers, easy-to-make meals. Jason is going to receive one of these care packages because he's a good at... Eat- what? I've been eating so much steak, man, and I'm going <laughs> to eat so much more. I'm so thankful to you guys for getting me this this deal. Right now, the Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sale is available for our listeners to help your family stock up on the food you love. Go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar. You can save more than 50% on your order. Get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. Omaha Steaks is partnering with Feed America to help families in need. They have already donated 100,000 servings of premium proteins, and when you buy select combo packages, they'll donate more. Be sure to visit omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar, bar, and help support Feeding America. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right, AFC winners and losers on today's show. We're going to walk through each of the teams, pick out some situations that have changed thanks to the NFL draft. That was a lot of fun. I mean, getting the opportunity to enjoy sports of any kind. And the NFL did a great job. This is one thing that I think we all reacted to and said, we were kind of hoping there'd be some tech snafus, maybe some mm-hmm. memeable moments, which there were. Mm-hmm. However, it <laughs> Not felt to like the, the NFL draft. Not to the degree that we wanted. Yeah, well, I mean, right. they, this is a biggest winners and losers show. Well, the NFL was a big winner. They came off strong. They looked great. The production was great. The biggest loser was the audience who didn't get to watch things collapse um, <laughs> and have people unmuted at the wrong moment. It, it, honestly, it felt like the exact same NFL draft that we have every single year minus the you know 10 seconds of a walk up and cheering from a crowd um so I, kudos to the nfl i'm there a are, big fan of the the roger goodell meme though where he's like kind of slouched over in his recliner if you haven't seen that one being I used not, around I it's very not. funny it's and it's very he, applicable for a lot of stuff he was also cutting some sweet m&m jokes oh man. i missed the cut. m&m joke what it's was just, the joke it was it, just this real stiff like i've got my jar of m&ms and it's getting much lower now <laughs> Like, yeah. like it was, it was, it was not a joke. That's a statement. It was so stiff. No, it was I, a pretty good robot joke. I mean, <laughs> you know, robots are still getting boop. used to that. Look, I've got a bag of Doritos and it's getting much lower every day. See, that was infinitely more entertaining, Mike. What you just did. Mm. Nailed it. All right. In the AFC West, let's start with the defending champion, Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> the biggest loser was... Me, the biggest winner was Clyde Edwards. The Lair. biggest winner was me and all the other people who have the 101 pick in rookie drafts. Wee! So I Clyde was... Edwards Alaire goes in the first round, the first running back off the board. Mm, 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 Jason mm, and Damian oh, yeah. Williams mm. share the huge loser prize in this one. Explain why you feel that way, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, so I pre-draft, I was not as enamored with Clyde's, uh, Edward, Clyde Edwards Alaire as most people. He he wasn't in my top tier of running back the way that a lot of people viewed him. Uh, I thought he benefited just tremendously from the system that he was in, having Joe Burrow, having the just that that crazy offense that scored as as many touchdowns as they did, and and I didn't think it was he was going to have that kind of a path in the NFL. 
what he does. And <laughs> he, here's the thing. Like, I'm on record why Leah is saying I, I don't think Damian Williams is a very talented running back. Also on record saying he's an excellent fantasy option. And, and that's what I see here with Edwards Alaire. You couldn't have matched a better specific player with a system for fantasy goodness. You've got a guy coming in who caught 55. Uh, 55. Yes. Where is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, caught, Pat, caught me mid mid Google. Sorry yeah. about that. Um, thank you for the apology on behalf of the Foot Clan. Um, but yeah, I mean he he catches fifty five uh, passes, 55. and um, and now he comes to a team. <laughs> there it is. He comes to a team that wants to throw the ball, and they wanted him more than anybody. <laughs> well, rest I, of the that's show. for the next. No, that's preemptive. That's for next time. Oh, all right, just um, so I don't miss it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, they had their choice of any running back here. The, uh, with the last pick of the first round, no running back had been taken yet. And Andy Reid uh, had talked that morning to Mahomes and said, all right, no th no thinking, you know, just top of your mind, who's the, who's the guy that you want first? He said Clyde. And so they went and they got him. And when Pat Mahomes says he wants Clyde and you spend your first round on him, I, I mean, I'm all in. He's my one-on-one. I think he's all three of our one-on-one uh, yep. So uh, he's got a great shady McCoy like future ahead of him. Yeah, I tried to find a reason not to make him the one on one after the second day of the NFL draft, trying to find some different stories, narratives, ways that he wouldn't be the number one pick. And you know, there are there are a few shots that you could take. Uh, you know, if you believe that Jonathan Taylor is going to take over from day one or something of that nature, but I couldn't find them. Uh, Clyde edwards alaire is going to be uh, tremendous. I wonder how much it helps Patrick Mahomes to have uh, another weapon. You know, Damian Williams was injured last year and Mahomes missed him. That was one of the things yeah. that happened on the field is you missed the wheel routes. You missed the reliability out of the backfield with the pass catching of Damian Williams when he was off the field. So from a stability standpoint, it has to help Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, this is an upgrade over Damian Williams. I, it was whatever, However down I was on Edwards Alaire uh, pre-draft hype, um, I still think he's a much more talented player than Damian Williams is. Uh, let's move on to the Denver Broncos. The Broncos, well, they did what they could to get Drew Locke Oof. some weapons. Woof, duh, man. Jerry Oof. Judy in the first round. KJ Hamler, another wide receiver in the second round. Jason, what tight end did they draft? They got Albert O, man. Albert O is who they <laughs> drafted. And, uh, he, he's he's a, a great option where they got him. I wouldn't even have the foggiest I believe yes. it's Ogwebunam. 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 Oku, 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 no, it's, it's, I, because I, I looked him up. I like, see Okuwe. I, well, I, I know, Fuck but man. I tracked him after, because he was one of the, uh, I think he was maybe the fastest tight end at the combine, or one of them, like his adjusted speed score is outrageous. Ogwebunam. Is what I'm way going but Foot Clan, if if the, if you're new to the, you know, not everybody listening to this show knows all these college players. Uh, it is spelled O K W U E G B U N A M. That is a name. <laughs> that is Al a name, Alberto. But they it's a name, and he is big, strong, and fast. Like the biggest winner from the Denver Broncos is Drew Locke because the team has gone. All in. They pulled an absolute uh, anti-Packers here with this draft. Oh, <laughs> yes. And they, and they said, what's the best way for our young quarterback to succeed? And the answer is to just drown him in talent at, <laughs> at each skill position. And that's including grabbing Melvin Gordon during the offseason. Like, if, if Drew Locke fails this year, they know. It's on Drew Locke, and then they, they need to go get a uh, another quarterback. Hey, Drew Locke has just become interesting as as a late round flyer uh, for fantasy purposes. I I don't know that he'll be my favorite uh, of that bunch, but when you when you have this level of draft capital and talent around you, like Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton Ooh. alone. Like those two guys, you're like, okay, I'm I'm pretty interested in that quarterback who's throwing them the ball. Then you throw in KJ Hamler, who is an absolute burner, uh, and Noah Fant. I mean, it, the the situation around Drew Locke is pretty close to as perfect as you can get. A Cortland Sutton owners want to know if they are. Oh, you're fine, losers, and me. I do not think that they are. No. I think it's only beneficial to Cortland Sutton to have that guy on the other side as he continues to develop. 
And that's what they got with Jerry Judy. Does anybody disagree with that? Is anybody looking at Sutton with a negative light for Dynasty or Redraft? I'm I am not, not. No, no. I think all three of us think his his role is what it's going to be. You know, I uh, I comp this to the former Broncos uh, reign when when you had Demarius Thomas as that big strong guy and Emmanuel Sanders as the uh, you know proficient elite route runner and and now you've got those two in Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. Um, you know whether Judy's a winner or not is entirely dependent upon Drew Locke. Yeah, so th- that's fair. The real question is, do we expect Drew Locke to fail or succeed. Uh, well, I you, towards- you mentioned you didn't like the landing spots for the big wide receivers. So speak to that for a second before we move on. Yeah, I mean, when, when you talk about the big two, uh, Jerry, Judy, and CeeDee Lamb, uh, you want them to go to a place with a great quarterback. That happened with CeeDee Lamb. You want them to go to a place where there's a path forward to uh, a lot of targets. That happened with Jerry, Judy. But neither player were able to obtain both of those. A, a needy team with a g- good-looking quarterback, uh, you know, and a path to the targets. I think that the only spot that that really happened was Jalen Rager with the Eagles. You um, saying Drew Locke's not attractive? Is that what you're saying? Well, That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I heard you. Some, he's, he's not, not good, good, good looking. He's not good looking. Hey, good looking. What you, you know, got good? <laughs> it's one of those things where he's going to be one of the most difficult players to project this year. He will and be you, tough, and and you need to you need to take your shot. You need to go in with a belief that he will succeed or fail. I think um, you either you're off of the Broncos' offense or you're all the way in. Yeah, the the Ve- uh, Las Vegas Raiders. We'll talk about them now. They drafted Henry Ruggs the third as the first wide receiver off the board. The ghost. Of Al Davis lives on. Yes, he does. As, <laughs> draft whoa. speed. That was Darius not your best ghost, Hayward Mike. Hayward Bay. <laughs> yeah, I, Darius oh, Hayward come Bay. Oh, come on. Ruggs is better than Hayward Bay. Stop. It's very similar, though, because no, in that no, draft. very different players. I'm, but. I'm just saying in that draft, there were highly touted wide receivers that were spo- expected to go ahead, but they drafted the fastest guy. Sure, I mean, but you, Ruggs you had, can catch. You had that's, Jerry that's Judy. And you had uh, C.D. Lamb. Th- this would have been a spot where if C.D. Lamb were drafted here, I would have loved it because while Derek Carr gets maligned, he's he's an acceptable quarterback. He's had fantasy relevance for Crabtree, for uh, Amari Cooper in the past. I just don't see Ruggs as a possession guy, um, so I wasn't excited here. But they didn't stop at Ruggs. I mean, they went out and they just – they're like, well, we need yep. a wide receiver, so let's go get all of them. Yeah, two more in the third round. Um. And you look at Tyrell Williams now, you look at Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. Do you put those three guys into murkier waters now, projecting with Ruggs and Edwards and um, Bowden Jr.? I do. I 100% put Darren Waller as a, an unfortunate loser when it comes to target volume. Like, Yeah, he's great, and he'll still be one of the better fantasy tight ends, but he was he was the right guy in the right place at the right time last year where the team lost their number one wide receiver right before the season and Waller was there to pick up the pieces. Now they've, they went out and they've, they really have equipped Derek Carr with, with a lot of players and including one of those third round guys, Brian Edwards, go watch tape of Brian Edwards from South Carolina. He's, he is a very interesting player. He's not an elite athlete, but he looks like an absolute top-notch wide receiver. He played his played four years for South Carolina. I believe he is the leading receiver from that college now. Like he is a very, very good player. Yeah, and Darren Waller last year third most targets among the tight end position. I just, I don't see a world where that repeats now. Let me ask you two questions here. One: Are these additions, uh, these three wideouts from the draft, are they enough? Are they the right type of weapons to make Derek Carr? interesting to you that's question one and question two is is if you had to pick one wide receiver to lock into your lineup from the first day to the last day of the season who are you picking on this team from vegas or correct uh he Derek carr becomes sort of uh i mean like he's he's interesting to me still the same way that that drew lock is interesting he I guess a little bit more so just because he actually we, we've seen proof that Derek Carr can be successful in the NFL. Is Carr a higher dynasty pick than Locke in your mind? No. Okay. Not to me. I th- he, when you go outside Marcus Mariota, 
I mean, right. if, you know, if you get Derek Carr these weapons and and he doesn't do what, you know, Gruden is wanting him to do with all these new tools um, because they're rookies, then, I you know, you could end up halfway through the year going to Marcus Mariota to just see what the future holds. Um, so, I you know, if I had to lock in one wide receiver for the whole season, I would still go rugs because the talent, yeah. the upside, the draft capital. you, you Over you, Renfro or, or Williams, not just one of the rookies, but any yes. wide receiver. Yeah, just solely because you know who do I expect to have a better season at the end in total? I would I would say Hunter Renfro, but if I had to lock one in, I I don't think Hunter Renfro is going to be special. He doesn't, but Ruggs has at least the chance to be excellent. Renfro's Los Angeles like, Renfro is like Cole Beasley. Like, are you excited for a Cole Beasley for fantasy purposes? Sometimes every once in a while he's going to give you like a you get you a get real excited about PPR week. You get excited about. Players like Cole Beasley when they have quarterbacks like Derek Carr sometimes. It's fair. Because that's why Darren Waller had success last year is those shallow targets. And Renfro did have some big plays towards the end of the year on the shallow targets. But it'd be hard to predict. It'll be interesting and, to see how, you know, we won't, we might not get to observe camp the way we have in years past, which means trying to weed through some of these situations is going to be new to us this year. I will say Tyrell Williams guaranteed money runs out after this year. So he likely will be a cap casualty next year. The Chargers. The Chargers ended up drafting a new quarterback, Justin Herbert, in the first round. Spent a fourth-round pick on Joshua Kelly, running back out of UCLA, a bigger guy, a compliment to Austin Eckler, but not a uh, a running back drafted in those top three rounds to greatly concern you about Eckler having his, oh, no. his, his no normal role, mm -hmm. if not a better role than the one he had last year. So we have to say Eckler's a winner. Yes. Uh, Justin Jackson, is he a loser? Any Anybody out there in the dynasty world trying to look at Justin Jackson with some potential? Jackson's about the same size Eckler is. Joshua Kelly's a lot bigger than both of those guys could steal the goal line work. Yeah, I, I think Justin Jackson is is a little bit of a loser here. I mean, you know, it's it's one of those <laughs> it's, it's whenever we do winners so and, mean. whenever we do winners and losers and you casually say it, it sounds worse than if you like pronounce it. <laughs> right. It's like much Justin worse to Jackson. say like he's a yeah, winner he's, to me. He's a little bit of a loser, you know. But yeah, you know, here obviously if they went out and they drafted someone super high, then he would have been a giant loser. Um <laughs> but right right now I, you know, I would put Joshua Kelly ahead of Justin Jackson. I mean, I, it's a fourth round pick, which isn't, you know, super high, but it was, it was very, very early, the sixth pick in the fourth round. Um, and, and he is a town, you know, I, I spent a lot of He's well rounded watching, uh, him play, watching the tape. And I, I think he could succeed there. Um, and I agree when it comes to, you know, needing a little bit more of a North South, uh, pounder, uh, goal line situations. Uh, you know, I I could see it being it's Joshua Kelly. It's it's a really good role for him to come into, right? You lose Melvin Gordon, and so there's a giant hole there. Is it all going to be filled by Eckler or Justin Jackson? No, they went out and got Joshua Kelly, and I expect him to inherit good opportunity. All right, the New England Patriots. Let's move over and talk about the AFC East. The Patriots. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know what you can say about this draft for fantasy purposes. Basically nothing. Some it's, head head scratcher tight end picks in the third round to me. Dude, on, honestly, those the the tight ends that they put, uh, picked up, especially Devin Ozzy Ozzy, he is he's interesting to me. Like uh, especially in this rookie class of like I didn't just put Cole Komet as my number one tight end because he was the number one guy taken. Like I, I don't like I don't really like him for fantasy purposes, but I think that Devin Aziazi and Dalton Keene, they both have a chance to come in here and establish like who longer term for the Patriots. Like they need to turn into a brand new team yet again. You have a you have a new quarterback. Julian Edelman is not long for this team. And then who do you have? Like who are the weapons? Nikhil Harry still there, first round pick. What's what's going on there? And uh, Ozzy Ozzy, he's a he's a big dude, and he's got a pretty good body control and hands as well. So he is he is interesting to me, especially because the Patriots took him in the third round. That doesn't hurt. No, no one is interesting here to me until they have a quarterback that I can rely. You took the words right out of my mouth, Jason. I'm not <laughs> interested. I'm not interested in one of them. I mean, Nikhil Harry 
to, is a, is is yeah, lost in fair. this draft. Uh, you know, he, because they didn't go out and and get a upgraded quarterback. If Stidham, you know, is excellent, then great. But I I don't believe that. That's not how I can project it. That's not what I believe. Uh, I don't believe that the Patriots were showing incredible confidence in them by not drafting a quarterback like we talked about earlier. It was that just is how the draft fell. Yeah, I I don't have a lot of enthusiasm speculating about offensive weapons in New England right now. Uh, and James hope- Devlin just retired, so the 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 running game takes a, a a massive hit. You saw the first three games last year with them, and then the rest where it was like, oh man, it looked like Sony was going to be a beast. Uh, I'm not into the Patriots offense at all. We, we didn't mention it in the news, but. Um- Mediocre signing of the week. The Patriots did sign another quote unquote weapon. Uh, former Jags wide receiver Marquis Lee, a one year deal to the <laughs> Patriots. So we didn't mention that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have, we have uh, raised eyebrows at many uh, Patriots wide receiver that have come in on one and two year deals. I even went through Jason. I don't know if you saw this list. Um, Aiken, Salas, Cauley, Tompkins, Dobson, mm-hmm. Wayne, Washington, Hogan, Floyd, Mitchell, Britt, Patterson, Decker, mm-hmm. Matthews, mm-hmm. Barrios, Fowler, Coleman, mm-hmm. Meredith, Inman. Those are all Patriots wide receivers. <laughs> Sanu. Uh, I left him well, off Sanu's to be nice there. to him. I left Sanu off to be nice. We could leave Jacoby Myers off to be nice. And uh, But the truth is, is raising an eyebrow at tight ends and wide receivers on New England's roster is not going to happen for me until we have a quarterback that gives me a reason to do so. It's going to be very interesting to see this team work to develop an offense. And like you said, you know, James Devlin retiring. What were we saying, Jay? I was just thinking it really sucks for the Patriots that they have such a good defense because they won't (laughs) be able to get that number one pick. uh, And that's the right play. They also might not need much of an offense to win. That's that's exactly where I was gonna go. Is they they made things easier for for Stidham by just loading up more guys for that already outstanding defense. Like they they have a plan, and it's we're gonna beat you with ten points. Did you guys watch the Pittsburgh Steelers last year? They did. They did not have mm. a quarterback, and they towed they the w- line. They would have been in the playoffs uh, with the new rules. They they were the first team on the outside. Um, yeah, no, that's a that's a really good comp. All right, the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills ended up drafting a running back in the third round, Zach Moss out of Utah, one of the you know speculative rookie additions that we've we've scouted, looked at. We we assume that it was a possibility. I think I bet that they wouldn't take one, or at least assume that they wouldn't take one, but they did. They took Zach Moss. This hurts the Devin Singletary shares to some degree. If you look at Moss just like a one for one replacement. Uh, a Frank Gore, you still have to discern whether that's first half of the year Frank Gore or second half of the year Frank Gore because one or the you know that made a huge difference in Singletary's production. Yeah, I mean they they've already come out and and talked about that. They've they've basically mm-hmm. out of their own mouths said that they that he's going to have that Frank Gore role and Devin Singletary will have that role. I fully expect that they mean the first half of the year, you know, or or towards the middle when it was. More of a one-two punch. At the end of the year, it was pretty much all Singletary. Um, they didn't spend a third rounder to not use Zach Moss, but this is, I, I mean, you want to talk about biggest it's also hard for a rookie the, to start the year in that role, though. Not a running back. I mean, running backs uh, usually are, are granted that opportunity. They, they come right in. They don't have to learn like the, the tight ends do. Um, and I, I think that you're going to have Zach Moss and Devin Singletary both be mostly disappointing in fantasy. And I, I think one of the biggest losers in the draft was Singletary because it looked really promising for him. Zach Moss was really the last name there that could have come on that day to uh, to get in his way. And I, I think this is going to be a real Can I play real devil's split. advocate? Yeah, please do. The, the pick gap between Zach Moss and Joshua Kelly was really not that large. Joshua Kelly was the sixth pick of the fourth round. Zach Moss was the 22nd pick of the third round. We looked at Austin Eckler as a winner. We're looking at Devin Singletary as a loser. Well, Austin Eckler, you know, I mean, it, I think the difference of losing Melvin Melvin Gordon to losing Frank Gore 
is is pretty significant and also you you know I've I've tried my best post draft to go through and watch all of the general managers uh, and head coaches uh, responses reactions their their little press conferences to see what the situation was about drafting the players specifically the running backs um, because it, I think that's telling for for rookie mm-hmm. year and the way that Zach Moss was talked about by them versus the way that um Joshua Kelly is is that Zach Moss is is coming in to to be the Frank Gore role and Devin Singletary I mean when they say that I I just have to go by it Mike did you have anything you wanted to add there uh, I, I I mostly agree there with what Jason's talking about I think Singletary will be I think he'll still be a, a fine running back too all right the Miami Dolphins They drafted uh, Tua in the first round, the fifth pick, new quarterback in town. Whether he takes over, gets an opportunity at all this season is yet to be determined. They did draft a tackle in the first to protect him eventually. And we're looking at, we talked about Jordan Howard as a potential winner in this draft because they did not, they were one of the teams that on paper, I know Mike and I both had, I think we both had DeAndre Swift Swift ending up in Mm -hmm. Miami. I don't know if Jason, you projected any of the rookies going to Miami as well, but this was a team that had an obvious need for a future running back. I don't think we consider Jordan Howard their future. So for them not to invest in one, to just trade for Brita, Howard ends up in a position where, you know, look, Brita, Howard, they're probably not going to be exciting options next year. We've been down the Bellage Road before. Is it? It was not a great road. It was actually as bad of a road as it gets. <laughs> It's true, but Howard's actually a good running back. Yes, he is an okay running back. Yeah, I, I think but good I think, good I running think, backs don't don't shift teams thrice. You know, like the way he has. He was they got rid of him in Chicago. They got rid of him in Philadelphia, and you know, I I would not have supreme confidence in Howard having great opportunities because this offense last year, you're not going to pass the ball to Howard, and sure. Balaj couldn't catch the ball, and we were disappointed in kind of the oh, hey, Balaj is the guy, so he'll be something. That just, highlight clip of Balaj dropping off the pass. Oh, <laughs> that, I need to go find that thing again. That'll cheer me up. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm not I'm not that enthusiastic about Howard to begin with, but he was certainly a winner in the fact that his role he, is carved yes, out. Yes, he's a winner as far as when you draft Jordan Howard, you're not going to be happy about it, but he, I, I think he will still see a ton of opportunity. I think he'll see over 200 carries. Miami, to me, did an excellent job in this draft. Uh, if I were running the Dolphins, I would I would not have taken someone like DeAndre Swift either. I mean, they, they took two linemen uh, within basically the first round. That They got Robert Hunt here as the seventh pick in the second round. Like, I think they are building the team the right way. Tua can completely redshirt this year, and the team is is absolutely fine. They didn't take forward. another skill player until My, the seventh round. Yeah, right. and, and that wasn't real. I mean, the the Malcolm Perry was, uh, you know, the thirty second pick in the seventh round. Uh, they had eleven picks in the deepest wide receiver draft uh, in a long, long time, and they didn't take one. And to me, the biggest winner on the Dolphins is Preston Williams. I mean, I we sure we already had you know Devontae Parker coming in as kind of the 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 one here. Um, but Preston Williams, a really good-looking rookie last year who unfortunately had the knee injury, should be fine and healthy for this season. Uh, he's the clear two on this team. There's, uh, you know, To me, they're, they didn't even try to bring someone in to compete. And uh, when you've well, got that Albert many Wilson's picks. Albert Wilson's still there, right? Yeah, I think so. Albert Wilson, I think, is uh, still on the roster. But, I mean, he Devontae Parker, Wilson, and... And, and Gasicki. Gasicki, big, like, that's to true. me... Gasicki is really going to be very, very interesting as your late round dart throw. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be very they did not they did what you said, Mike. They, it looks like they are sitting there realizing they get to retool the interior yeah, I love the defense it. and then come back next year and if they want to grab a bunch of skill players and just then, load up. They can yep. do it. The New York Jets. Now, this isn't nice. This isn't nice. We <laughs> The show doc, Kyle, snuck in here, Adam Gase, as a loser, but just because. <laughs> that's not, I actually Kyle, think they, ha- I think they had a good draft. You. I'll be honest with you. Um, How much of that is related to them simply drafting Denzel Mims in the second round? 
well, I think I, I love their first round pick, a going okay. tackle there. Right. And then Mims, I think, has the opportunity to be maybe the most productive rookie wide receiver of the entire class this year. I am very it's possible, very excited about Denzel Mims' opportunity with Sam Darnold and them drafting O line to start this draft. If you look at the rest of their wide receiver core, you're picking, but you know, Jamison Crowder, Bashad Perryman. So there's opportunity there for Mims, and he's a player that I think is just look. If yes, he could be a a Green Beckham of sorts, but I like the talent and ability, and I just don't see a clear path for some of these rookie wideouts the way I do for Mims. But winners and losers on this team is Darnold a winner? It didn't really feel like he's a winner. They didn't load yeah, I mean, up. I, I, I think Win so. Win yeah, winish. 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 <laughs> I think that he is a, a winner in Sam the sense Donald the winish the winish um, in the sense that they got him you know their first two picks right a, sure. a, yeah. a, a highly him. rated offensive lineman and then a, a guy that in Denzel Mims we all really liked now mm -hmm. it's crazy because he he was the thirteenth wide receiver drafted which it is didn't insane. feel like it felt like he dropped I mean it, significantly but then you look at the draft capital and it doesn't feel that way. Yeah, I mean, it was a second rounder for the Jets, so that meant something to them. But obviously, a lot of teams out there chose to pass on Mims over and over and over. Twelve of them. Um, <laughs> it's you know so, uh, but but yes, Sam Darnold is a winner here. His the first two rounds were giving him pieces. All right, the Baltimore Ravens coming off a fourteen and two season, they end up going J.K. Dobbins with their second round selection. Oh, man. Running oh, back man. out of Ohio State, Dobbins oh, was the man. Dobbins yes. was the fifth running back off the board. Uh, went behind what Clyde edwards alaire Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, and Cam Akers. Cam Akers, but walks himself into, struts himself into mm -hmm. what seems to be a very, very good situation. And with that draft capital, I can't help but really, really like him in rookie drafts. Oh yeah, I mean he. First of all, you're going to a team breaking the the you know team rushing records here because this is wh where do you want a running back to go more than the Baltimore Ravens? You've got Mark Ingram who's 30 years old. Uh, he's not going to be there uh, forever, and in fact, they can basically uh, it should get be out the last him. year for him. I think. Yeah, exactly. And and in the meantime, you know, so if you're talking about a dynasty draft, I know Mike and I we co-own him one. We just drafted uh, Dobbins. Um, you know, and so it was one of those like this season, Mark Ingram is going to run ahead of Dobbins. Um, yeah. that, you know, that's, that's his role. He's the vet. He was fantastic last year, but I don't think Gus Edwards will run ahead of Dobbins. Um, and you know, Gus had 133 carries. So if you're talking about Dobbins being involved rookie year, getting 150, 175 carries, assuming everybody is healthy, I think that's realistic, which is, which you, you can be somewhat relevant there, but then long-term the future on this team for such a productive, uh, running back. I, I just love the long-term outlook for Dobbins. Anything to add, Mike? No, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Dobbins. I loved the talents of it, uh, of the player. And the, the fact that, that he will get to run with with Lamar Jackson on those read options, like uh, that's a that's a part of the game that that Dobbins is very very successful with. So he's, he is a perfect fit at the running back position. All right, the Pittsburgh Steelers they only had six picks in this draft. They invested two of their first three on skill players: Chase Claypool, their first pick in the second round, seventeenth pick of the second round, wide receiver out of Notre Dame. Uh, and then you have Anthony McFarland Jr. running back out of Maryland in the fourth round. What was your reaction to those picks, and who are the winners and losers on the Steelers roster? So I'm I'm very interested in Chase Claypool. He was the he went to the combine and absolutely just destroyed it with. Uh, we're talking Calvin Johnson size and speed. I'm not calling him Calvin Johnson. Just saying like athletic measurables. That was that was the guy that he compared to where it was really really eye opening for some people where Notre Dame like Notre Dame they they get a, they they have some wide receivers that go out and have very successful careers but they never have like insane college production you know like uh Golden uh, Tate like Golden Tate Boykin last year went to the Ravens Will Fuller I mean like good wide receivers 
who but they don't pop off the the chart when you're just looking at their production and, and the fact that the Steelers grabbed him with their first pick where wide receiver wasn't seemingly one of their top needs I mean maybe I'm sure the team felt differently but the fact that they went and got him they have a very strong track record comparatively to the rest of the league of just they they've really had some major major hits at the wide receiver position so Claypool rose on on my draft board and especially the fact that at the draft it was announced Chase Claypool wide receiver that was kind of one of the big things was will Claypool be forced into becoming a tight end and Pittsburgh did not view him that way yeah, Pittsburgh, yeah, has ahead, a, uh, Pittsburgh has a pretty good track record of drafting wide receivers. They're certainly not all hits. We were talking about that before the show, you know, 50-50 on, on their track record. But that is still a, a pretty plus track record compared to most of the league. So when they took Chase Claypool, it was a little surprising. It was ahead of some other guys. It was ahead of Denzel Mims. Um, you know, and, you, you, sorry, Jay. And, and this is coming off the heels of mm -hmm. the news before the draft was the team's going to let Juju walk. Yeah, and, and and obviously, if Juju were to walk and Claypool steps up, there's a massive uh, value to be had here. So he just, he is interesting. Just to be clear, the team has not said anything about Juju um, Smith-Schuster walking. Yeah, I'm walking. sorry. There the, was the one, beat, one, one beat writer speculated that that could happen. This might position the Steelers in a, a better place. Um, it's ironic because the Claypool draft pick could mean you know the end of the road for someone like James Washington, who was a high draft capital pick by them, two years ago. Deontay Johnson last year. I think Deontay Johnson has a great future in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So it'll be very interesting to watch this. I'm not, you know, we all know that the future at the quarterback position in Pittsburgh is going to, you know, Big Ben's not the guy. <laughs> they so still they're need gonna, to find it. <laughs> they still need to find it. And this is yeah. a defensive team. I'm not enthusiastic about anything short term with Chase Claypool myself because of the quarterback situation and the, and the guys above him. Kind of reminds me of the Jalen Hurd pick by San Francisco last year, which I believe was a second round pick as well, or am I wrong? No, I think it was. I, I believe that's right, yeah. And both kind of similar guys that might toe the line between wide receiver, tight end, um, be another asset to this team. They added Ebron, so in terms of year one, it's hard to see Claypool fitting in yet, but for sure. the future, it's very possible. Yeah, I mean, And then I mean, James Conner. Let's talk about Conner and oof. Anthony McFarlane, because Conner could have been supplanted by an earlier pick but they just didn't have the picks to do it that's what no. it looks like to me so yeah, i mean this is think? a team that uh you know the two of their first three picks were focused on offense they knew that they had a great defense and they needed to get some more explosive weapons you just brought up ebron in in free agency it's just ironic to me that you're replacing you know if if you're saying we're gonna bring another running back in here because obviously james connor was injured all the time you go out and you get anthony mcfarland um who, who is who's not big he's a little it, boy and he's always been injured dating back to high school and basically yeah. every year of his career is injured but he's electric like when he's out yes. there he is so fun to watch uh, mike you brought his name up pre-draft as, as as someone to watch the steelers are a really good landing spot for running back in general because of the health of uh, james connor so i'm excited to see what mcfarland does here but i, I didn't get too hyped um you know it wasn't uh he's a complimentary back i yeah, think that that's yeah. the biggest thing he's you didn't have them you know draft a replacement for James Conner in this situation. The Cleveland Browns, okay. I mean, they got Baker some help on the offensive yeah, line. If, love it. You know, you you talked a little bit about the Broncos, Mike, the fact that they're putting themselves in a position to see, look, it's it's Drew Locke's fault. Look, there's no way that this is not a make-or-break year for, for Baker Mayfield. If you have reinforced that offensive line, you have the weapons that you have on that team – Hooper, an off-season acquisition. Beckham, Landry, apparently Njoku's back. <laughs> <laughs> they also but, drafted Harrison Bryant, another yeah. tight end. Yeah, another yes. tight end. Yeah, and so they and they and they ended up with an offensive tackle in the first round to help keep Baker upright. So this is a very make-or-break year for Baker. When I'm looking at my dynasty rankings, he was one of the biggest challenges because I have to decide when I'm ranking Baker. Does this guy have a long-term future in the NFL or not? Am I taking him above an Aaron Rodgers in a dynasty league right now? And that's a difficult decision. Those guys fell in at the back of the... Green Bay made it easier for you. Well, yeah, moving on. But uh, <laughs> was there anything else from the Browns that you guys wanted to talk about? Or can no, it's, it's, it's Baker is the big winner to me. Yeah, the, the offensive line. Left tackle in uh, uh, 
this draft and right tackle in free agency. So it's it's great. Not enough. We need at least three or four more tackles to keep Baker. <laughs> the Bengals. They ended up with Joe Burrow. We know it. Number one overall. T. Higgins was their wide receiver pick of choice in the second round. So A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, could have been worse for their situation. But, I mean, Higgins feels like a, a compliment in year one. You got Joe Mixon not being challenged by any running back draft picks. What were your takeaways from the Bengals draft? Uh, I think that they're going to do their best to have an explosive offense. I mean, if you get AJ Brown back, uh, AJ Green back on the field, you add T. Higgins, which is a huge play uh, type of guy, to uh, a team that has a great possession receiver in Tyler Boyd and the speed in John Ross. Joe Burrow, to me, looks set up to succeed. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously Joe Mixon could catch the ball, even though he didn't do that much last year. So th I think they want an explosive offense here. And, um, I think Joe Burrow will eventually bring that. Will it happen year one? I don't know. But T Higgins was also, yeah, I, I think that was a really nice pick to pair with Burrow. Uh, you know, you, you had Andy Dalton and, and AJ Green come in on the same year. And now you've got Joe Burrow and T Higgins b drafted together. Uh, many years later, it feels similar. And and listening to the Colts draft, um, and and watching Chris Ballard talk, you could tell that Michael Pittman, who went uh, right after this to the Colts, it seemed like they were hinting that you know they, they were, were sad. eyeballing Higgins. They were sad as soon as Higgins went, they knew they had to take their, you know, their other guy that was you know big, strong, fast uh, wide receiver. So that 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 honestly gives I I really respect Chris Ballard. Um, and so, you know, if they were eyeing him, that gives me even more confidence in, in Higgins as a prospect. All right. The Houston Texans only had five selections in this draft. <laughs> uh, well, Arizona Cardinals GM, uh, Bill O'Brien didn't <laughs> oh, have, no. he didn't have oh, no. you know too many picks to work with here. Uh, as far as fantasy goes, there was you know pretty much nothing a fifth round wide receiver they they got a, a tackle in the the mid rounds but um yeah i would say i would say biggest winner here is uh the cardinals <laughs> <laughs> all right a team with much more uh draft capital here the indianapolis colts mike you just talked about it their first pick was michael pittman junior wide receiver out of usc he's a big boy he's a beast he's going to be a very nice compliment for ty helton and another uh, foundational piece for this team and its future. They also invested a second round pick on Jonathan mm. Taylor out of Wisconsin. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Ooh, baby. Uh, we have a couple of excited gentlemen here. Oh. Uh, well, like the night of so round one, the draft ends. I I posed the question to Twitter. You know, like where where could someone go that has the possibility of unseating? Clyde Edwards Elaire as the 101 pick in rookie drafts. And Jonathan Taylor didn't get there for me. I still have Elaire as my number one guy, but Jonathan Taylor, af after what seemed like a slam dunk 101, Jonathan Taylor made it a little bit more difficult. It's not necessarily this year. What's what's real, what's wild about these running backs, and I wonder if Jason feels the same way as I do, like five guys. I love the landing position for five players, but it might not be this year that those five players become really fantasy relevant. Uh, and Jonathan Taylor's one of those guys. Marlon Mack will still be there. He's in a contract year. Uh, it's it would surprise me if if uh, if Marlon Mack gets completely beat out by Jonathan Taylor, and we're looking, it's it's just Jay Taylor and and Naheem Hines as the two main guys. I think it'll be three guys, but long-term, this team, this philosophy, this offensive line, and Jonathan Taylor's skill set, it is it is a perfect, perfect match for me. Yeah, I, so uh, Jonathan Taylor was my number one as, as far as the prospect went pre-draft. This offensive line is excellent. Obviously, Marlon Mack, been a thousand-yard rusher, uh, was last year, almost the year before. Um, and so, it, it, you know, there is competition in the backfield. He doesn't just come in and inherit it. However, um, listening to Chris Ballard talk, this was really enlightening because they were considering Jonathan Taylor 
at the second pick of the the second the round spot. at the Pittman. He was one of the guys they were deciding between. Um, and I think the T Higgins going is what made them take Pittman. But then they still had a chance. And what happened was, and this is interesting, um, Irsay, uh, the the owner, he had it on good authority that the Jaguars were. Uh, at least that's the insinuated team because he said it, you know, it was in division, and that's the team they traded right up ahead of. We're going to take Jonathan Taylor, um, and so th- you know they he called uh, he called Chris Ballard and said, "Hey, this guy, you've been talking about him all off season. Go get him." And so when you when you hear that this is someone that they were considering taking with their first pick, which was basically a one, and then they trade up mm-hmm. to get him uh, still early in the second. Um, and now some quotes coming out about, you know, you, you need multiple running backs, but, you know, you it's really advantageous to have a three down skill set where you can be on the field all the time. I mean, to me and uh, on this offense that I, I like, I love Frank Reich. I love the offensive line. I love the talent of Jonathan Taylor. It, it's a near home run. And I agree with you, Mike, this year you've got Marlon Mack still involved, but he won't be there next year. Well, you still have Jordan Wilkins on the roster, Naeem Hines as well. And we saw this last year with when Mack Wilkins. went down. You saw when Mack went down, Jonathan Williams was was in the backfield too. So they kind of yeah. mixed and matched behind them. They needed another big guy to come in that can uh, carry the load. It'll be interesting to see what this year looks like with Mack and the rest of the backfield. And then moving forward, you know, Phillip's Rip, Phillip Rivers is not going to be there forever. So it'll be interesting what they do at the quarterback position with this offense. They did draft Jacob East, Eason. He could be the quarterback of the future. Yeah, he's he's actually we'll if, find for out. a for a low draft capital quarterback. It's interesting. All right, Jacksonville. Let's talk about the Jags. First round pick. They did not spend it on a skill position player. No running back. No wide receiver off the board. Um, they did take a wide receiver in the second round. Chenault. Yeah, they grabbed Lavisca and. You know, they did not make a splash at the running back position despite trying to give Leonard Fournette away. <laughs> what's what's funny is last year Leonard Fournette seemed to be the default offensive weapon. Not necessarily by choice, but they didn't have anybody else and he just took up the mantle. And for fantasy owners, I don't care if you like it doesn't matter if the team likes him or not. Mm-hmm. Then the draft comes and goes and they have tons of draft picks. Twelve draft picks. And they don't take a running back. Not one. So you're in this position again where it's like if if there's smoke and there's fire to this, we don't like Leonard Fournette, it where don't is matter. the evidence? <laughs> it don't matter because... Because he's going to be default okay for fantasy again unless they find a free agent uh, running back to... That's to, my concern, uh, honestly. like the, the Jags will be a team that I what, expect... What like, free agent j- running back? Oh, like well, they had Hyde a little bit ago. Maybe he comes back. Uh, Shady McCoy says he still wants to play a few more years. Lamar like Miller's still out there. Lamar right? Miller is coming off of his ACL. Pay- surgery. I mean, yeah. n- none of those names to me are going to worry me about the fantasy relevance of uh, Fournette. This to me seems well. Like if he's team- cut, his relevance will well. Go down. Yes, I would <laughs> completely agree with you there. If he's cut, I will change my opinion of his <laughs> fantasy sure outlook. Um, but as it is now on this roster, currently post free agency, currently post the NFL draft, it, I mean, he is the guy again. Um, and, yeah, and it's kind of shocking. And he's in the you know he w- they won't care about you know saving his legs or just run him into the ground because you know you don't necessarily expect him to be there. So I think he'll you know un- unless major things change in free agency, the oh, rest yeah. of the De- way. Devonta, Devonta Freeman's still out there, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so like, I, I, they're just they're a team I'm going to watch. I'll, I'll agree with you guys. Uh, if we just de facto into Fournette as the guy, all right, fine. I'll be interested again for fantasy purposes. And then Gardner Minshew. Yeah, they didn't take a they, shot at another. They quarterback. traded Nick Foles away. They and it was that was like a hypothesis of okay, they're on the board in the top ten, and one of the QBs is there. Do they do, do they take that shot? And they said no. And they're. All in on Gardner. They got him another weapon. They got another lineman. Yeah, I would not be excited about the long-term situation for Didi right now with the higher draft capital pick of Chenault no. and having Chark there. So that would be somebody that I would consider to be a dynasty loser, not seeing yeah, Didi take like advantage it. last year, and the team seems to want to get another weapon. 
Uh, let's talk about the Tennessee Titans. Is this the final team we have, Brooks? It is. Yes, sir. The last AFC team. Winners and losers, Tennessee. Okay. I mean, Darrington Evans. He goes an interesting into that. third round pick. Yeah, he goes into that Dion Lewis role. Um, so, I, you know, he, I think that's the replacement. Younger, faster. Um, Not it's, Dion. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's 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 a decent role. He'll he'll probably have more fantasy relevance than Deion Lewis did at the you know last season. That's not saying a whole lot, <laughs> but yeah, they they just chose to replace him in the draft, and he's a he's a pretty good complimentary he's a good back. player. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is Corey Davis still alive? Uh like physically? <laughs> as far as I know, I haven't I haven't heard any rumors well no mike i didn't mean physically that's not a we don't joke about things like that mike yeah i My mean they, they they took a right tackle uh in the first round which is important because they lost jack conklin so you know trying to replace that for the most part i think what you're going to see for tennessee going forward is the same exact offense that you had last year now whether or not they'll succeed as much they certainly probably won't when it comes to just their touchdown rate in the red zone things like that that were uh, outlandishly high but i think you're going to have the same desire so is core davis alive well he's probably going to be similarly used uh, as he was last year which is we know what he is now yeah exactly we know what he is this is this is uh aj brown's and derrick henry's offense all right we want to thank pristine auction great friends of the show a calvin ridley signed jersey yesterday on pristine auction.com signed falcons jersey 68 dollars 86 cents for a up-and-coming calvin ridley jersey hundreds of nice. daily auctions from your favorite players teams some of these rookies uh they've got uh, a lot of great stuff over there check them out pristine auction.com all right jason went toes out mm. we're done with this episode <laughs> we'll come back on thursday and talk nfc winners and losers this is a lot of fun yeah i, I yes. can't wait stay tuned foot clan we'll be back in a couple days goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.